Now let's take a look at SQL Secure, what it can capture, and how it complements SQL Compliance Manager in fulfilling your audit needs. SQL Secure provides two key features, identifying SQL security risks and reporting on their effective user permissions. There are over a hundred security checks that can be configured for SQL Secure to monitor and alert on. The first thing we will do is create a policy, usually mapped to a regulatory guideline. SQL Secure will use this to identify security risks and violations against that policy, and you can configure multiple policies for each server. There are built-in templates for a number of regulations and guidelines, including HIPAA, PCI, CIS, and a various IDERA and Microsoft recommendations. SQL Secure will also identify vulnerabilities by reporting on true effective user rights across all SQL Server objects. In many cases, users are not directly added to SQL Security, but get their permissions by being a member of a domain group. SQL Secure will enumerate those domain groups to provide a complete user list when analyzing user, group, and role permissions. There are 23 reports included to help security officers, managers, and auditors see the information they require. These reports can also be deployed to an SQL SQL Server reporting service for subscription and scheduling. Because SQL Secure utilizes snapshots to capture all security objects, we can compare security, risk, and configurations over time. And finally, as your SQL Security is configured, SQL Secure can send an email alert when new risks are found. Now let's take a look at what SQL Secure has captured in my environment. This is the SQL Secure console. I have a number of servers registered and a couple of policies. I'm going to walk through the process of adding a PCI policy. I'll select on Create a Policy. I then have some templates I can choose from. Of course you can build your own. I'll select the one for PCI. And there's over a hundred checks, but for PCI regulations there are 79 enabled policies. You can check any one of these and look at so the specific criteria around it, and some of them will also have notes around the PCI regulatory guideline, in this case section 2.2. A little bit later I'll show you the internal notes where we have that information. I can select what servers to apply and here's those internal notes. You can edit or modify this as you wish, build your own. Certainly if you have exceptions to the policy you want to make sure you have them documented here. And then I'll go ahead and click finish. Go ahead and select that policy to look at and then it's going to pull up information as far as the findings as it relates to this particular policy. So here are the findings after we've applied that guideline. We're currently looking at this server and the PCI guidelines. As you can see there's a number of findings including things like the public role has permissions and we'll even have details as far as the findings. In this case public has permissions on the ACME, the AdventureWorks database and a few other databases as well. A common finding is the SA account. A lot of the regulatory guidelines will talk about let's go ahead and disable that SA account and if you have to have a SQL login with the sysadmin privileges, let's at least create one with a different name. And that's what this one is looking for. It's asking whether or not the SA account has, is not disabled or renamed. And sure enough, mine is enabled. This is a common finding. Some of the other things that it finds, however, may not be so common and things you may have not thought about before. For example, let's go ahead and look at the dangerous extended stored procedures. In this, it's telling me permissions on extended stored procedures had found, executed, granted to public, that public role, on XP Durtree, on XP fixed disk drives, on XP get net name. Now individually, these not, may not seem like a security risk, but if you put all these all together with just public access, I have a pretty good idea what your SQL server looks like, and that's not a good thing to broadcast. 
any one of these, you can dis you can double click on it. Again, get the detailed information about it. If you need to adjust it, you can certainly do so, or you can review the internal review notes. Again, this is where you might add exceptions or why something may not, like for example, the SA account has to be enabled for an application or something. You'd want to document that here. Everything we've been looking at is part of the server security report card. When we take a snapshot or schedule a snapshot to be run, the first thing it's going to do is look at the policy and come up with these findings. You'll also have the information here as far as you know what particular policy we're looking at, that description that we've created or was part of the template for that particular policy, as well as information about the server and when we last took a snapshot. Now that we have a policy in place, we can create an assessment of the findings. Assessments are used to further document the security findings of a snapshot as it relates to a particular policy. These can later be used for reporting to auditors or to compare other assessments. There are three stages of assessments. The first, a draft assessment, is used to fine tune your data and settings when you begin your audit process. A draft assessment represents the first step in the audit process. Draft assessments typically contain your initial findings, including any discrepancies that should be investigated before your review. When selecting Save as New Assessment, a new assessment is created in draft. You can update and change draft assessments as often as you want, and any changes are not recorded. Simply select save as a new assessment. You can give it a name, whether it's the date. I'm just going to put initial in here because I haven't run it before. And I'll click OK. And now I've started with the beginning assessment process. As you can see, it's in a draft stage. The next thing I'll be doing is adding some explanation notes to some of my findings. For example, here it's telling me the SA account is not disabled or renamed. I can select it, I can either right click and select edit explanation notes, or I can simply click the ribbon button edit explanation notes. And here's where I'm going to give a reason on maybe why we haven't corrected this problem. So I'll click on explained and in the, in the notes I'll just add, you know, application cash flow requires the SA account to work. And then I'll click OK. And so we'll go ahead and do this for each of our findings. And so we can have an explanation on why this particular security risk is still considered at a high risk. And once we've done that, notice it's no longer here in that red risk. So we need to kind of go through all these until we get them all down into what has been explained. And now because it's been explained, you can see it's still considered a high risk, but you'll see there's a green checkbox next to it. The next stage is to publish the assessment. You will publish a draft assessment when it is ready for internal or external review by the audit team. Publishing an assessment lets you safely distribute your findings and explanation notes. When an assessment is published, SQL Secure begins tracking each subsequent change applied to the assessment. To publish the assessment, click on the Publish ribbon button. We'll verify that you're ready to publish it and click yes. Any changes done from this point forward will be logged. Let me go ahead and make a change and I'll show you how we can see that information in the change log. Go ahead and edit the explanation notes. Click OK. And now we have this tab here that says change log. And when I click on the change log, it has all the different changes that we've been doing as it relates to this assessment. The final step is to approve a published assessment. Approving assessment lets you safely archive your assessment for future reference. An approved assessment proves you are in compliance with specific corporate and government regulations and have successfully completed an audit. A proven assessment when the internal or external audit team has signed off on your assessment and it is ready to be archived. 
Approved assessments accurately represent your security status at a specific point in time and no longer require changes. I will go ahead and approve this assessment. It has now moved my assessment into the approved assessments and I can no longer make any changes to it. Now let's take a look at our permissions. I'll go ahead and click on Explore Permissions. And I've got a number of snapshots and I can actually look at a point in time of who had permissions during this snapshot versus the one that I most recently took. And you'll notice in here there's a number of accounts. The one thing I want to point out here is this is a true effective user list. For example, this a first count here you will not find in SQL Security. It's because they simply don't exist there. They have their permissions because they are a member of a domain group. In fact, I can double click on that user and you can see that they are a member of the Acme DBA's domain group, which happens to have sysadmin privileges. This can really save you a lot of time when you're coming up with a true effective list of who has permissions on the SQL Server when a lot of users have been added via a group. What you would have to do today is go into SQL Security, you'll get a list of everything in there, whether it's users or domain groups, and if you have those domain groups, the next step you have to do is now go to your Active Directory, look in who the members of those domain groups are. And this can be a very time-consuming process. SQL Secure has already done all that for you. We can also examine the users in the group as well. I can right click on the global group here, say view group members, and here's all the accounts that are part of that domain group. All this tabular type data can be exported to Excel or printed, whether it's the view group members or this view here. Now, let's say you give this information to your auditor and they say it's not detailed enough. Not a problem. We'll go to Reports. We'll look at the All Users permissions. I've gone ahead and selected my server and I'm going to leave it for all databases. And now when I run this report, it's going to be extremely granular on exactly what every user can do, whether it's explicit grant or deny permission. In fact, I once got asked, what if a user had select and delete permissions only on a particular table? I thought that was kind of odd, but I went ahead and did that and I took a snapshot and I'll show you right here, we're under the Acme database, the audit test table, Bruce here has explicit delete and select permissions. So again, this is a very granular report on exactly what a user can do or not do. And somewhere down here, I do have, there we go, we have some explicit deny permissions as well. There are a number of other very useful reports in SQL Secure. For example, the suspect Windows accounts. When you run this, it's going to identify any time that there's an orphaned account. An orphan account is when you've added an account in, let's say, your Active Directory, and then you've explicitly added them to SQL Server. At some point in time, you remove them from the Active Directory, but that doesn't automatically remove them from SQL Server. So when we run this report, it's going to identify any time there's a count that has been orphaned. As you can see, in this case, it's trying to resolve the SID, and it can't because it no longer exists in the Active Directory, therefore it has become orphaned. And we can go ahead and now go into that server and correct that. Some of the other standard reports would be like server roles, understanding whether it's across all servers in the policy or for a specific server, you know, who are members of what server roles. And so we'll look and see all that information here. And again, it'll have those accounts. And in this case, this is for that sysadmin role. Or we can go ahead and look at database roles. Again, select the server, and when I run that report, it's going to give me the list of all the different databases, the different roles, and who's a member of it. And notice even here, you'll see that this account, again, has gotten their permissions via a Windows group, and, and that's how they've been added. 
These are just a few of the reports that are available in SQL Secure. I know most of you are watching this video because you're more interested in, you know, you have an audit coming up and you need to be able to satisfy those audit needs. I strongly recommend that you also look at SQL Secure, download it as a trial, point it to your production server, and see what it comes back with. I've encouraged other DBAs to do that, and many times I get an email back saying, I had no idea about this or that. There's a user that's been here and they haven't been with the company for months. Or as it relates to, you know, our security summary, you know, here are some things I never thought about as it relates to overall SQL security. That concludes our demonstration of Compliance Manager and SQL Secure. For more information about either of these tools or to download the trial, please visit www.idera.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.